Back again, back again for our next video within this series. And today's video, or tonight's video, we're going to follow on from our last video, which was our models where we build out our basic bare bone models. And we did say we're going to go ahead and try and test it and see if we could pull back some data from our database. So likewise, like always, we're going to jump straight into it. Um, we're going to be going into PHP admin I'm going to import some dummy data that I had, well, that I've got from a previous project that's going to give us something to work with, right? So I'm going to take you through the process of how I'm going to import this data. Please note this is not a MySQL tutorial at this particular point. I'm simply just going to import some data that's going to give us something to work with, right? So I'm going to change my screen and you guys can sort of like follow along and see how I'm doing this. I'm just get a browser screen up like that. So I'm going to, I mean, I've already got ZAMP installed on my computer. It's my local development environment, which comes with PHP, um, PHP MyAdmin and Apache, right? I've already got that set up. I'm hoping you guys already have that set up or you know how to get it set up or get it working. So I'm going to, open up my PHP admin and hope you can see that properly. Yeah. So I'm going to create a database and I'm going to call it um, MVC framework, right? Click create. Now we've created a new database table. Now I need to import some data in and I'm going to hit the import tab and I'm going to bring a file in I've got stored on my memory stick. And this this particular SQL file right here, open that up and I'm going to hit go. Let that run. So we've just imported all those dummy data. So let's go and have a look at that and see what it all looks like. So that table was MVC framework and we've got 20 different tables to, to work in. So we've got quite a lot of data right here. Um, so we should not be short of that. Right, so now we've got our data within our database going to go to our project, which is going to be a local host. Right, and that automatically lands us onto our own controller, which if I take you back to our application directory in our controller, we created these two files a few videos ago when we was demonstrating our route. Our route right so if we open this file you will see that these are what we these are what we did in a few videos ago where we were testing our route and we declare all these methods we've got our filters and our index action which is what we're hitting now let me bring that page back up which is what we're hitting now so we we'll type local host and we're hitting that home controller because that's how we've set it up right and i can demonstrate that we're hitting the controller by by echoing the statement so i'm going to echo Welcome world. Reload my page. And there you go. Let's just increase it a little bit. Right? There we go. Welcome world. You can see that we're hitting that actual controller. I can change it just to verify again and say Hello YouTube. And there we go. We're definitely hitting that controller. So what I want to do at this point, now we've got our data. We want to actually test and see if we're going to pull back the right data from the right table, right? And that's going to be pretty simple. And how we're going to do it within this test, um, I'm going to show you something to bring in that model. We need that model, right? So it's going to be use app model, and it's going to be user model, right? So I'm going to come into my index action. I'm going to create an object. I'm going to say user equal new user model now before i go any further let me point something out i've seen a lot of different mvc application where if you want to get data from a database it's always a case of 
creating an object over and over again within different methods to get that data. That is not how I'm going to do it. I'm simple demonstrating within this video how we're going to get that data. I'm not going to do it like that. I'm going to be using PHP reflection class and I'm going to be creating some sort of like dependency injection, which I'm going to inject all dependency for this class within the constructor and then use it that way. That way I am not instantiating object in different methods just to get or instantiating the same object over and over again to get a data. I'm going to be using PHP reflection class to create some dependency and using a container to contain all of the class dependency for each class. Again, that video is not far away. We're going to be implementing that and using it that way. But for the purpose of this test, I'm going to create an object within this index action so we can try and get some data, right? Deep breath. <sighs> right, so I'm going to say user equal new user model, right? So I'm going to say data equal user. And remember, let me open up this model, user model, right? Uh, we're getting an error while well, we get an error. Let's ignore that for now and go to our magma directory and get our base model. Now we're returning this get repo method, which is going to return an object of that repository. This is what we need to reference within our controller. So if I go back to my controller, I said user and say get repo, right? And let's bring up our repository as well and see what we can what we can test. So if we go to liquid ORM, let's get our data repository and let's try and fetch or use some of these methods. So the first method I'm going to try is this find all method. And actually, while I'm here, there's something that I forgot to mention as well when we did our update video, I think yesterday, and we went about changing some exception. I also went ahead and I changed out how I was returning this method. I'm just simply returning this find by instead of going through the CRUD and the read. I'm just simply returning the method that we've already built within this repository, which is this method down here. Returning it without any argument will give us all the result in that database. So it's an easier way rather than going through the entity and the CRUD and the read with just simple returning what we've already built. So sorry about that, I've completely forgotten about that one, but now I'm in this class, I can see it, and let's point that out. All right, so I'm going to test this find all method. I'm going to test, well, I'm going to test some of these methods and see what we can get back. <clears throat> Save, back into our own controller, we're going to say arrow, and we're going to do find all. And we're just going to dump that out onto our screen and see what happens. So var dump. And we're going to kill kill the script by saying die. Let's pass that data in. All right. Let's reload our page and see what we get. Oh, and we're getting an error right away. So it's saying magma base abstract abstract base model not found. Right. So I think that's the error I was getting just now. And obviously this class is not within the base directory. It's within a directory in the root of our framework. So let's get rid of that. And that should fix that. All right. Let's reload again. And voila, there we go. It's not readable, but we're getting back all that data from our database which is referencing our users table. So if I go to my user model and I change this to say user save, get an error, we're saying base table or view not found. So we have not got a table in our database that's called user. We've got a table that is called users. And I'm gonna demonstrate back into our PHP admin. And we got this data table down here, users. That is a table that we're referencing, right? If I pull it, you see we got quite a lot of records in. And the first one that pops up is 
me actually which is if I reload that if I put this back to where it was users reload you'll see that first name is Ricardo Miller right that's the actual data we're pulling back straight away from um, our database and the, me the, the model is just as simple as that we're declaring the table and the ID and passing that back to our repository which is fetching that data from that particular table so let's try and fetch a method let's try and fetch so this user has got an ID of one so let's try and fetch um, the user by the ID of one. And that's going to be the find method. So let's try and implement that. So it's going to be find. I'm going to pass in one because that's the user ID. Reload. And there you go. We're only getting that one record back of that one particular user. We can do different users. Um, let's pick a number. Let's actually look and see what we got. We got 45, let's do 45. And who is 45 in a database? 45 is Justin Reed. Whatever Justin Reed is, I don't know. Justin Reed, and he's 45. Let's say 45, save, reload, and there we go. Justin Reed. So we're pulling Justin Reed's data from our database pretty simple all right let's just test out a few more methods before we end this particular video um find by let's test that find by method all right find by and that contain our dot consist of a few arguments so we can find record by name email id whatever whatever column we've got in our in our database table we can find the record or the record by that actual string we got conditions we're not going to do not we're not going to touch the parameters nor the optional we can mess around with these two parameters and see what we can get back so i'm to say find by and obviously the first two arguments well they're all arrays so i'm going to an array and i want to find by the I want to get all data via via first name and condition or condition. I'm gonna say ID. Actually, let's not do that. Let's just file this first argument and see what we get back. So we're getting all the result back, but we're only getting all the first names. That is all we're getting. Just first name, first name, first name. You can see if we type in last name, getting all last name. And if I put a next string, say last name and email, reload, also getting back, getting back email and last name right and we can put as much as we want or as li little as we want it doesn't have to be um just last name and email we could leave it empty and that will return all the data or we could specify what columns we want to pull right and let's try a next one that repository let's try find one by right so it's called find one by and this takes in an array as the argument so we want to find let's see what we got here let's find peter parker at yahoo.com let's copy that email and let's find by email. So I'm going to say email. And we're going to paste in Peter Parker. And we should get Peter Parker's detail or entire record on the screen. And there we go. We've got Peter Parker. We've got all of his data, password, etc. Everything. 
it's all right there and again it could be anything it could be id and we're going to pass in the id say one and that brings back my, that brings back sorry about sorry about that, that that and that brings back my details right and this is dummy details it's not valid it's not true that is valid but don't spam me please right so that's as simple as it get it was a lot easier than i thought it would be because we've created that underlying structure we've we did all that hard work in the first set of videos by implementing all of these features so we can then pull that data in our application very easily so that's going to be it for this video um stay tuned because we're going to be implementing or we're going to be working within this controller application and we're going to jump to implementing more core features like data table on our data columns we're going to be implementing that like we're going to be implementing our form builders so there's three core classes that we still need to implement which is going to make even pulling data a lot better so stay tuned for those videos because they're coming up pretty shortly thanks and good night